Emmanuel Church, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I am Pastor Swanson. It is good to be with you here on this day. Uh, all of you, a beautiful sunny day. Uh, and uh, we bring God's blessings to all of you. A few announcements uh, uh, for this day. The flowers right here in front of the lectern and the flowers here in front of the altar. Uh, folks at home can't see these, I don't think. Um, but these are given in memory of uh, Mary Webb, who passed away this last week. And uh, the memorial service was uh, yesterday out on our back lawn. We had a good crowd here as we remembered uh, Mary and her life, uh, and her life among us, too, and how she has uh, served our Lord and uh, continues to be with her Lord in our Lord's heavenly kingdom. So uh, the thing about the flowers here, if you know, uh, and anyone knows at home, of somebody who uh, could use some flowers to brighten their day, um, please uh, take those flowers to them. Um, they are there, uh, and we want to honor Mary that way uh, by giving those flowers and passing those on to somebody who could use those. So uh, please do that. Uh, a couple other announcements. Next week, we do have a baptism uh, in worship, uh, so we haven't had that for a while. Uh, again, masks are required, but we will have a baptism next week and Holy Communion as well, and that is uh, next Sunday. Two weeks from today, we have um, the first meeting of our call committee, so we want to make sure our call committee knows about that. It's uh, two weeks from today on August 8th after worship. Our, our committee will meet the first time as we get underway in that process of uh, uh, di discerning our mission. And you as a congregation, uh, everyone should hear this uh, at home and present here, is that uh, we're going to be asking um, information, your opinions on, on, on some things um, and how you see Emmanuel Church, uh, you view its mission. We need to present that to a potential candidates um, uh, for ministry here as a pastor. So please uh, don't file that immediately into the wastebasket, but we need your opinion and we, we need you to uh, get back to us about that because it is a lot of work and we thank God for that committee and their coming forward. Those are my announcements. Anything else, Madam President? Anything else on this day? Again, greetings to all of you. Please stand for the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teaching and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our opening hymn is Break Now the Bread of Life, verses 1 and 2, number 515.
Sisters and brothers, call to freedom in Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Together let us pray. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading today comes from 2 Kings chapter 4. A man came from Bethshali bringing food for the, from the first fruits to Elijah, the man of God. Twenty loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elijah said, Give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and they had some left, according to the word of the Lord. The second reading today is from Ephesians, third chapter. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth take its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that suppresses, suppresses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all things of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us, able to accomplish abundantly, far more than we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Here, here ends the readings. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. 
Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him away by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Not, not, not too long ago, it, it wasn't long ago, some, some friends stopped by our house down in Pennsylvania where, 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 uh, where I used to live. My wife's still down there, uh, um, and uh, she, she's down there and will rejoin me soon after we finish buying a house back in western New York, but she's still down in Pennsylvania. And we had some visitors come by our house. We had some visitors come by our house as, uh, as they said, a brief visit. Keep that in mind. They said, a brief visit. It was one of those unannounced visits. A stopover by people who pop in when you're mowing the grass. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Pop in when you're mowing your grass. It seems it, seems it always happens that way. It? it seems it happens that way. You're, you're on your knees. This has happened to me too. It's you're on your knees and you're scrubbing the kitchen floor. Or you're under the car with grease all over your hands and you hear the doorbell ring. Or that familiar voice calling your name and you have to drop everything and spend the afternoon socializing when all you really want to do is get the work done that you've been waiting a month to do. Are you with me? Yeah, you had, we've all had this happen. And the, real, and the real clincher here is the real clincher is you have to feed them. <laughs> and, you know, and you know how this goes? They say, well, I'm only going to stay a few minutes. I'm only going to stay a few minutes. But you know you have to feed them so you don't appear rude. You have to feed them. That, that's especially true when, 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 when your guests have traveled a long way to see you. 
You know, they've, they've traveled a long way. You don't know, you didn't know they were coming, but they're, they're, there they are. They're standing at your doorstep, and surprise, we're here. We're, we're traveling. Yeah, this has happened too. We're traveling to California. We left from Florida, and, and you know, we wanted to stop by to see you. We didn't realize it was 900 miles out of the way. <laughs> you mind, do you mind if we stay the night? Of course you mind, but you don't say it. It sure would be nice to know. That. It was sure would be nice if they would have used that newfangled device that just came out a couple of years ago, the phone. <laughs> And call the head. But now you have to feed these people that have been at, that come to your door, and you want you don't want to head out to the grocery store. You're just planning a light dinner, relaxing, early to bed. That's what you were figuring. No fuss, just a little quiet time to be by yourself. And that's where the gospel lesson picks up. Jesus wanted to do the same thing. Have a little time by himself. Do you remember how, you know, we've been talking about this for these last few weeks, how Jesus tried to little, catch a little time away from the crowds. Remember that? A little away, time away from the crowd. First, retreats. This is how it started. Retreats at his friends' homes. He started there. But then people followed him there. So he then went out into the countryside. But what did they do? They followed him there. So then remember this part? He got into a boat traveled across the lake, they still followed him, and now he went up a mountain, but they found him there. Everywhere Jesus went, the crowd followed. Sick, desperate people, you're with me? Sick, desperate people, they're following Jesus, people whose lives were empty. You see, you see what they were, though? Friends, you see where they were? They were travelers. They were travelers too, just like those people that come to our door. They, they went out of their way, if you will, to find Jesus, and they caught him when he'd rather be taking it easy. But he had to feed them. When guests come into your home, you offer them a drink. Do you not? You offer them a drink. Something to eat. You say, you, you say, pull up a chair, enjoy the house as, as if it's your own. You know, our place is your place, you know. Kick up, you know, rest, a, you know, kick back, rest a while. Hospitality and friendship, that, it's that way. That's particularly true when it's the holidays, isn't it? When it's the holidays, you know. Put out a plate of cookies, you know, we got coffee on, stay a while. Then it's a given that you hold nothing back. You, know, you bring up all the, the fixings. And, and, and that's the way it was with Jesus. Because did you hear it in the story? It was the Passover. That was the big day in the Hebrew calendar. Everyone eats and shares in the celebration. Everyone has a good time. It's just that in the story that we heard just a minute ago, the, Jesus had a problem. Seems he had just a few more people than he was expecting. And yet this was the, the Passover. But he didn't have just a family. You know when you celebrate the Passover, usually just your, your family, it's, it's a meal at home, sort of like Thanksgiving, if you will. And so Jesus had planned for a couple of, a couple of dozen, you know, maybe his disciples, their wives, their, their friends, their children. But it looks like someone, Jesus' secretary messed up, messed up with the invitations. <laughs> because word has it, you know, they did a head count, they said, you know, Jesus, there's 5,000 here. 5,000. So you know what Jesus does? He, said, he turns to Philip, he says to Philip, go out for food. Jesus says to Philip, where are you going to buy the food, Philip, to feed all of these people? He turns to Philip and says that. As if Philip, Philip can just pop down to the nearest Wegmans, you know. <laughs> Go down, bring back subs for everyone, Philip. And Philip responds. He says, six months' wages would not buy enough bread to feed each of these people, even just a little. In other words, good idea, we're just a little short on cash, Jesus. So, you know, Philip there is very realistic, isn't he? He's very realistic. 
If Jesus were telling him to go out and buy food for all these people, he must he must be pulling Philip's leg. You know, he has to be joking. Jesus can't be serious. But wait, wait. Here's the story. It says here comes Andrew. And Andrew says, you know what, I, I, he, he's holding the, he's holding the, 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 the arm, he, got his, he, he probably has his arm around the shoulder of this, this boy, and he says, he's got bread and fish. He's got bread and fish. Apparently the boy's the only one that was smart enough to pack lunch for the day. And a nice lunch at that. He has five loaves, two fish. But this is, this is what Andrew says. What are they among... So many people. That's the question. How do you feed the visitors when they pop in unexpectedly? I'll get it out. Unexpectedly. And you'd rather they come at another time. What do you do when the food is in short supply and you have to feed the house? Pop a casserole in the oven? No, Jesus told his friends to sit down and stay alive. Pull up a place on the mountainside. Get comfy sitting on that nice green grass out there. And then with some bread in hand, he offered a prayer. He said, table grace. Over this little boy's lunch. It must have looked absurd. And then, and then he passes out the bread and the fish. It seems like everyone looks and says, well, maybe a lucky few will eat. But no, everyone partakes, all of them. And do you remember, did you, did you listen carefully how much they ate? Did you catch that in the story? Did you catch that? One slice of bread, one little bite of the fish? No, they, they ate all the fish and all the bread that they wanted, each of them. It says, until all were satisfied. In other words, they ate until they were full. There was enough, there was so much there, so much that there was enough left over to fill 12 baskets to take home to those who have to work the night shift, those who couldn't be there, the sick and the homebound, enough for them too. And the people were just amazed. They, they, in fact, they were ready to crown Jesus king. <laughs> what a spectacular deed. They said, wow, it's amazing. And what Jesus did reminded them at this point of that story, the first lesson that Glenn read of, of Elisha. It reminded them, you know, Elisha did the same thing, you know, a couple hundred years ago or so. The old story said that Elijah was given 20 loaves. That's how the story goes, 20 loaves, and he fed 100 people with it. And like Jesus, Elisha faced people who just didn't think it could be done. But Elisha fed them too. The people ate and they had some left. Jesus didn't want to be crowned king. He wasn't in this for the glory. He had one purpose, one purpose in mind. And that was to reveal God's love to teach, to heal, to heal all those people who came looking for him, to take care of their needs, to reach out and, and to feed and to welcome his guests. They came traveling to see him, and he fed them from five loaves and two fish. And Philip laughed. And Andrew couldn't see the use of passing out so little to so many. You know, I think about this, and I say to myself, what about us? What about me? I think, do I? Do, 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 do we think God's grace will be enough for us? Do we think it'll be enough? Or just not enough at all? It seems that Scripture is telling us that Servants of God, people with their eyes wide open are able to look around them and see the abundance that God has. Too often we only see scarcity. You know, that man came to Elisha. He only had 12 loaves. 
he was told to feed a hundred. And when Elisha commanded him to give it to the people to eat, the man could only believe that it was just not enough. He said, how can I set this before a hundred people? You see what the man did? He did a quick calculation in his head. He calculated in his head, 20 loaves, 100 people, this isn't going to work. No way on earth will this feed, huh, feed these people with even a small amount. And likewise, a large crowd gathers around Jesus on a mountainside. It's Passover. And Jesus said, well, where are we going to get the food to feed them? And the disciples, yeah, they can only see that it's not enough. Scarcity, that's it, scarcity. They calculate in their heads, it's not enough. 5,000 people, it's not going to work. There's not enough to go around. You see, my friends, it's not that Elisha and Jesus don't see the numbers of hungry people needing to be fed. You know what they see? They see that there's enough. There's plenty. There's more. They see the power of God at work in and through the food that's available. The power of God is the abundance of the Lord's servants see. You see in the story? The food, the food, my friends, is already there. It's already there. And Elisha and Jesus opened the eyes of the people, the crowds, to see it. But the disciples can't. Oh, God's grace and mercy are so plentiful that they never run out. Forgiveness, friends, is eternal. You know what that means? It never ends. The love of God is everlasting. The crowd that came to see Jesus knew this and believed. The crowd believed it. The disciples were the ones that had the problem. The crowds were hungry and tired and far from home, and they trusted that this man from Galilee, this wandering, this wandering pastor, could heal them. More than the disciples themselves, the crowd, the crowd could see God's abundance just overflowing in the love and grace of Jesus. And so I ask myself, what about me? What about us? <laughs> Maybe the traveler who visits has come to remind us of God's abundance, of overflowing grace and mercy and forgiveness. You see, the power of God is the abundance of God's love that his servants always see. It is the abundance of God for a world of travelers, unexpected guests, wanderers, everyone. It is the abundance that feeds all who are hungry. Even that visitor who comes knocking unexpectedly at your door. And God gives plenty with plenty more left over. Please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth.
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. Our prayer response is, your mercy is great. We pray for the church. O Lord, bless the ministries of our neighboring congregation. Empower churches throughout the world and encourage missionaries who accompany our global neighbors. And kindle in us a spirit of collaboration that all people may know your loving works. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. O God, we pray for your creation. Send rain to lands experiencing drought and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat. Nurture wheat and barley crops grown for the nourishment of your people and conserve aquatic habitats in our fish population. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray, O Lord, for those who govern. Cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption, and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire them with a vision of the common good and a commitment to ensure that all who hunger are fed. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And we pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens, those who are employed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable housing, and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve, especially the family of Mary Webb, and hear the cries of those who call to you for healing, those we name before you now, with our voices aloud or in the silence of our hearts. For all travelers, for all visitors who come to us unexpectedly, for all who are far from home, for those in military service, for their families, for those transitioning, for our congregation in transition, for our call committee, for all of our leaders, for all those who work in food pantries and shelters, for all of those who give abundantly for their riches to feed all of God's people. For all the hospitalized, all the homebound. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for this assembly, those present and those who are at home. Deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And we give thanks for those who have died. As you sustain them through all their days, so dwell in our hearts, that we may have the power to comprehend with the Apostle James and all the saints the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Christ Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Now let us ready our hearts and our minds as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. 
You formed the earth from chaos. You encircled the globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains and grace deeper than the seas. You blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own. That also we, the strange and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You call to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come, let us eat and drink. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now may the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
We conclude with the last verse of Break Now the Bread of Life, number 515. Go now in peace filled with the good food of our Lord Jesus Christ. Forgiveness, life, and salvation overflowing for you. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.